of our Lord and Savior. This is Ken Waterbury, the Country Parson, with the James King Chorus and the Country Parson Quartet, Post Office Box 397, Northridge, California. Friends, we are happy for this opportunity to come into your home today. It is our hope and prayer that the music and the spoken word will be a blessing to your heart and life, and that you and yours might yield your life more fully to the Christ of Calvary. We hear many people today disputing the word of God, and some people say that the gospel is a failure. But this is not so. Man is a failure. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. It is not the incompetency of the gospel, but the willful unbelief of sinners that prevents the conversion of the world. Jesus said, Him that cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out. But he said also, Ye will not come unto me that ye might have life. While we are to preach the gospel everywhere, we are not to expect that all will receive it. For when he said unto them, Go ye into all of the world, and preach the gospel to every creature, he also added, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. But what if some did not believe? Still their unbelief make the truth of God of none effect? God forbid, friend. Jesus could see into the heart of the soul of man. And as we read in the scriptures in Isaiah, we hear these words. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. To every one that has Christ in his heart, this will be the final testimony of his life. Now the choir will be singing, I have Christ in my heart. find in the New Testament, in the second letter to Timothy, in the translation that is written by Phillips, these beautiful words. But you must realize that in the last days the times will be full of danger. Men will become utterly self-centered, greedy for money, full of big words. They will be proud and contemptuous, 
without any regard for what their parents taught them. They will be utterly lacking in gratitude, purity, and normal human affections. They will be men of unscrupulous speech and have no control of themselves. They will be passionate and unprincipled, treacherous, self-willed and conceited, loving all the time what gives them pleasure instead of loving God. They will maintain a facade of religion, but their conduct will deny its validity. You must keep clear of people like this. You see, friends, sin makes man blind, and he cannot perceive his corruption. He believes in the good within himself and deifies his own nature. Man must have the opportunity to test his strength in all directions so that he may attain at last to a recognition of his impotence. Human collapse must become the method of divine reconstruction. Human failure reveals the bankruptcy of the natural man. The history of salvation is an historical self-justification of God. We read in the word, So that thou mayest be justified when thou passest sentence, and mayest stand forth as victor if one disputes with thee. God chooses for himself the weak of the world, so as to put to shame the strong. He calls the last and makes it first, and the first becomes the last. And all this comes to pass so that no flesh shall glory before him, but that he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. You see, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And if he is a new creature, then he can say, I am bound for the kingdom.
prayer time now on the Country Parson program, we realize that this is where the source of strength comes from, to help one another in Christ, and where we find in our solitude with our Father the strength to meet the trials and the tribulations of each day. I'd like to remind you, friends, out in Radio Land, that every Sunday morning we have a prayer fellowship, and in our prayers there we would be most happy to remember your request if you have a need or a heavy heart. Just write to Ken Waterbury, the Country Parson, Post Office Box 397, Northridge, California. It is prayer time now, so let us lift our hearts and our minds unto Christ. Almighty God, we thank Thee for the gift of eternal life. We thank Thee that Thou didst first love us, and that You provided a way whereby we might have peace with Thee through Thy Son. We thank Thee, Father, that in this life as we walk daily we might have the strength of Thy Word and the leadership and instruction of the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us. We thank Thee for the cleansing through the blood of Christ. And we pray, Father, that out in Radio Land now that you would open the hearts and the minds of thy people and those that are hungry in their soul, and may they find peace with thee, and we'll remember to praise you for it, for we have asked this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. strains of that beautiful number, I will never cease to love him, fades from our ears. I can't help but think of all of the beautiful promises of Christ that have been fulfilled literally from the word of God. May I cite a few of them for your own recognition and to help you as you would think of the cause of Christ and the promises that he has given to you and me. He was born of a virgin at Bethlehem. There was to be the slaughter of the children. He was to be called out of Egypt. He was to be anointed with the Spirit. He would make his entry into Jerusalem. He was going to be betrayed by a friend. His disciples would forsake him. He would be sold for 30 pieces of silver. They would buy a potter's field with this money. He would be spit on and scourged, but there would not be one bone of his body broken. When he cry, would cry out, they would give him gall and vinegar. In his hands and his feet would be pierced. His garments would be parted and lots cast. He would experience poverty, suffering, patience, and death. All of these were literally fulfilled when Christ came. As we think of this and see the prophecies, the fulfillment of them, how can we dare to deny the finality of the promises of the Word of God which are to be fulfilled and the eminent return of our Lord and Savior? I think as we would consider the martyrdom and the sufferings that have gone before us, it would help us to realize that we have a rich heritage that God has given us, and we should be ever so careful 
and not allow it to be slipping away from us, not trying to make appeasements and altering the word of God. In one of the persecutions, there was a blessed martyr by the name of Ignatius, who was held very famous and is reverenced in the minds of many today. He was appointed to the bishopric of Antioch next after Peter in succession. Some do say that he, being sent from Syria to Rome because he professed Christ, was given to the wild beast to be devoured. It is also said of him that when he passed through Asia, being under the most strict custody of his keepers, he strengthened and confirmed the churches through all of the cities as he went, both with his exhortations and preaching of the word of God. Accordingly, having come to Smyrna, he wrote to the church at Rome, exhorting them not to use means for his deliverance from martyrdom, lest they should deprive him of that which he most longed and hoped for. Now I begin to be a disciple. I care for nothing of visible or invisible things, so that I may but win Christ. Let fire and the cross, let the companies of wild beasts, let breaking of bones and tearing of limbs, let the grinding of the whole body and all of the malice of the devil come upon me, be it so, only may I win Christ Jesus. And even when he was sentenced to be thrown to the beast, such was the burning desire that he had to suffer, that he spake what time he heard the lions roaring, saying, I am the wheat of Christ. I am going to be ground with the teeth of wild beasts that I may be found pure bread. In Mount Ararat, many others were crucified. Many were crowned with thorns and spears run into their sides in the imitation of Christ's passion. Eustachus, a brave and successful Roman commander, was by the emperor ordered to join in an idolatrous sacrifice to celebrate some of his own victories. But his faith, being a Christian in his heart, was so much greater than his vanity that he nobly refused it. Enraged at the denial, the ungrateful emperor forgot the service of this skillful, skillful commander and ordered him and his whole family to be martyred. We find in the word of God, it tells us, But thou, O man of God, Follow after righteousness and godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. My friend, there is victory in Jesus for everyone that will trust in him. Redemption 
story, and some sweet day I'll sing of there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me. has been a rushing, mighty wind of false religion and lukewarm Christianity lashing the world at this very moment. Having been warned by fireless men of false fire, we settle for no fire at all. The church which began with men in the upper room agonizing is ending with them in the supper room organizing. The Bible tells us that we must beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. There is an account that is given in the Sunday School Times where a Christian physician was once obliged to take refuge from an approaching storm in a grocery store which also contained a bar. There were two drunken men present, and as the lightning flashed, they poured forth such a volley of fearful oaths that finally the storekeeper said, Gentlemen, I am no Christian. But I want to say that your awful cursing is too much for me. God will strike you dead right here with a stroke of lightning if you do not hush your blasphemous oaths. The leader of the two rolled up his sleeves, and he went to the door and cursed God and defied him. At that moment, a blinding flash of lightning descended with a flame of fire. Quickly the light was gone, and only smoke remained. In a moment that too had disappeared, and there lay God's defier in a heap, just as an empty garment when let loose would fall. The physician helped to lay the man out, and he said he did not believe there was a bone two inches long left unbroken in his body. Man never ceases to struggle with his Creator. We find man defying him, refusing his remedy for his life. Remember, the Scripture tells us, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. And you today, you know what the fruit of your life is, and you know where you stand with the Heavenly Father. May God the Holy Spirit speak to you now, and may you yield to the Christ of Calvary. Blood can make the vilest sin. 
It is the hope and prayer of everyone on the Country Parson program that you might know him and the power of his resurrection. I would like to suggest to you that if you would turn into the book of Romans in the 10th chapter, you will find the key of how God would direct you. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Won't you lift your eyes unto the Christ of Calvary now and know him as your Lord and Savior? Well, friends, the old clock on the wall tells us we must be moving on. We have enjoyed the privilege of coming into your home. It is our hope and prayer that you did make a decision for Christ. If you did, and just write to us. We'll be most happy to send you some literature to help you in your new life in Him. Write to Post Office Box 397, Northridge, California. The music of the Country Parson Program is under the direction of James King. This is a faith work, and your prayers and support would be thankfully received as the Lord directs you. Just write to Post Office Box 397, Northridge, California. Until then, this is Ken Waterbury, the Country Parson, the James King Chorus, and the Country Parson Quartet saying, The Lord be with you till we meet again.